Studio International has come to Peckham, South London to see an exhibition of paintings by Norman Hyams titled Ethos at the Hannah Barry Gallery. Hyams graduated from Chelsea College of Art in 2006 and in 2016 he completed the Terp Studio program. You've just completed the painting program at Terps Art School. Yeah. Can you tell us what it did for you? Um, it changed my work. It brought me to this point. It brought me to a point where I could actually talk about the work. I could, um, I suppose I could qualify myself as a painter. I mean, I left Chelsea in 2006 and, and I've worked. I've worked sort of, you know, I've, I've worked constantly, continuously from that point on. You know, I was in a lucky position where, where, I could, where I could leave Chelsea. I pretty much left Chelsea. I took a studio and I just worked without having to show or without needing to show. I just wanted to get into a studio and I wanted to, I wanted to make work um, how can I say, that I felt was, was true to me. I wanted to make honest work. I also wanted to make work that I could look at and feel good about, I could feel proud of. It was funny really because when I, when I went to Chelsea, you know, my life before Chelsea, it, there, there, was, there, were, there was no painting, there was no, there was no art. You know, I left school, I did a lot of, I did a lot of drawing when I was in school. I mean, it was the only thing I liked at school. But I left school and I never carried on. I then, I, I went off, I, I, you know, I, I, I worked and, and, and there was always this nagging, there was always this voice that was kind of, you know, I wanted to go to art school, but I was scared of art school because I had a, a tiny taste of, of what I, of what, what I thought art school was going to be, which was, you know, standing, standing in a room around, a, a, around a, a table full of fruit, you know, a, still, a typical still life, and, and drawing with, with, a, with a class full of people. And, you know, that, that sort of, that feeling, that feeling that, um, I don't know, it's a difficult one to, it's, it's a difficult feeling to explain, but, just not feeling good enough, not feeling good enough in, in that situation. And then I went to art school, I went to Chelsea. It was interesting, the way, the way that it felt when I finally got into an art school and I finally got a brush in my hand and I started painting and it just felt like this is what, I'm, this is what I need to be doing. And I decided, I decided, in fact, when, when I went to art school, I said to myself, I had enough kind of, I suppose I had enough I had enough um, experience in life to understand that if I, if I give myself a year and after a year it becomes clear that it's not what I'm meant to be doing, then I can, I can cross it off my list and I can just carry on. And, and, so, and so I went. And, I, and after three months it was obvious that this is, this is what I, I want to do, this is what I need to do and I decided to dedicate myself to it, full stop. And that's what I've done. And that's what I've been doing since 2006, after leaving Chelsea. But then what happened? I got to a point where, um, like just before I went to Terps, I had all this work. I had this studio, I had loads of paintings, I had all the materials, you know, I was, and, and, and everybody that saw my work, they were responding to it positively. But I still had this, this reluctance to, to show anybody, to talk about it. I, really, I was still really unsure of what I was doing, what, why I was doing it. And, uh, and I was just, you know, I was, talking, I was talking to a friend of mine in a bar one night, and I was actually toying with the idea of doing an MA. Um, the, the thing that put me off of the MA was, was the thesis, because I did one of those in Chelsea and I didn't really want to do another one of those. I love the practical, I love being in the studio. The other stuff, I found it very difficult. And um, anyways, and she suggested Terps. 
And I happened to be reading that magazine quite a bit anyway, and I said, you know what, I didn't even think of that. I'm going to apply. The deadline was the following day. So what I did, I just wrote a very sort of candid application, threw it out there, and I thought, you know what, I'll take the chance and see what happens. Anyway, they, they accepted, I went on an interview, they accepted me, and, um, and, and the work changed. The, 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 the tutor that I, was, that, that I was working with there, she pushed me to start drawing. And I'd always been hiding the drawing in my paintings at Chelsea. You know, I was using loads of paint, I was using great big brushes, loads of colour, loads of expression. You know, I was looking at lots of abstract expressionists. So, and, and I think that basically what I'm trying to say, what, what dawned on me is that I, I think I was hiding, I was hiding in the paintings. I was using all of these sort of vehicles to just keep people away from the truth. And I think the truth was that I, want, I, I think that I was a figurative painter making abstract paintings. Um, or I needed to make the figurative paintings to, to make the abstract paintings. It was strange. It was really strange what was going on with me as a painter. And then Anyway, so I went to Terps and I was pushed to draw. Suddenly this, this tutor recognised something in me. She said to me, why are you making these paintings? And I said, well, what do you mean? And she said, you're a figurative painter. Why are you making these paintings? And I said, well, if you think I'm a figurative painter, I'll make some figurative paintings. You know, I suppose really, I was, I was, I was, I was looking for guidance. Anyway, I just went for it. I started making figurative paintings. I started drawing a lot more. Um, and something started to shift. Something started to shift. I started to feel like I belonged more to the paintings and they belonged to me. I wasn't uncomfortable standing with this work, talking about the work, you know? Um, it, felt, it, felt, it felt good to, to, to be making the work I was making. And that was, that was the turning point. I mean, that, that, is, what, that is what Terps did for me. Um, it stopped me from hiding, uh, literally, you know, coming out of the studio and becoming part of something, becoming part of this sort of conversation that I was desperate to be part of, but I, I was sort of desperate to stay away from at the same time because I felt like there was no place for me. I love painting. I, I think that left to my own devices, I, there was this belief in myself. There was always a kind of belief somewhere that I was a painter, but there was also this, this doubt. I suppose Terps made that doubt a little bit quieter and allowed me to, to, to just make a little bit of headway. Um, you know, and... Uh, and now, now I'm here, you know, now I'm, I'm sort of, I feel like I'm at the beginning. I'm at the beginning of, of, um, of, of, I don't know, at the beginning of whatever. I mean, this show, this show came about because um, I, I had some paintings in a show in Florence. I had about 15 paintings in a, in a group show. Paintings which happened over two years. Usually I make big paintings. These kind of paintings are, are somewhat different to the kind of paintings that I had in the show in Florence. How can I describe my process? I very much believe in sort of losing a painting and finding it and then losing it and finding it and this sort of push-pull that goes on within my process. Um, which gives a painting for me a certain, it, it kind of puts it, it, it puts it in between an abstract and a figurative painting. And I think that's what I'm interested in. I want the paintings to have that quality. Because I explained earlier that this, this tutor said to me that I'm a figurative painter, why am I making abstract paintings? There's still a side, there's still a part of me that, that I think there's, there is still an abstract painter, and I think I will go back to abstract painting once I get this out of my system. I think it's something that I need to do. It's something that I need to prove that I can do it. And then I'll go back 
and maybe look elsewhere. These paintings, they more or less came about um, by using three or four images that, that, that I've had for some time and I've actually made a hell of a lot of paintings from about three or four images over the last couple of years. One image is, 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 a, is a photograph that I found, that I found where I live in, in, with, with, my, with, my, with my partner. It's, it's an old photograph of her as a child in a, in a, uh, at a party. There's loads of kids and loads of, uh, you know, just, just, just a, a typical sort of uh, family photo with this uh, table full of food and, 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 and basically, the, how can I explain this image? There's lots of, there's lots of action in this image. There's, there's lots of, uh, I'll look at this image. I mean, the, the way I've been making, the, the way I've, I've, I've been, the, the way I've been making paintings is, if I react to an image immediately, I'll try not to question it too much. I'll just, I'll take that image and, 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 uh, and I'll just go with it. This particular image, I could probably work from this image for the next 10 years and probably get four or five bodies of work out of it. I mean, there's so much going on in this tiny little photo. Um, so that was one of the images. And the, the other images that were a combination of sort of things on my phone that I just took, you know, uh, at home, and also a couple of images from magazines. Some of these images suggest some kind of a story or a narrative, but they're not, there's no closure. And so in some way, or it's not precise. And it reminds me of a line from a Bob Dylan song. Something's going on here, but you don't know what it is. Do you, Mr. Jones? Yeah. It, it's, I, I hear that a lot when people talk about my paintings. And, uh, and I agree. I agree because I suppose that it's what I'm trying to do. It's what I'm trying to do. You know, I don't, I, I really, I don't want to, I don't want to give too much. I don't want to, I don't want to say too much. Um, I want to say just enough. Talking to you now, it, it forces me to think about the paintings. I mean, when I make a painting or when I'm about to make a painting, I try not to think about a painting. The one thing I don't want to do is think while I'm making a painting. I just want to, I just want to lose that. I just want to, I want to lose all sense of time. I want to lose all sense of what anybody thinks. Um, and, and, and I just, I just want to, I just want to kind of disappear almost and then come back, come back when the painting is there, when it's finished, when I recognize that it's enough. And it, and it sort of holds all of these components that, that, that work for me you know, and um, there's all kinds of things going on when I'm making a painting. I'm thinking of other painters, I'm thinking of other paintings, I'm thinking of art history, I'm thinking of the future, I'm thinking of now, I'm thinking of how they're going to be perceived and I'm thinking that I don't want them to be perceived. All of these things that are sort of going on, which I really enjoy while I'm making a painting, I really enjoy all of that, all of that stuff that goes on. And then, and then suddenly something happens and, and I think it's finished. I've gone through this, this kind of experience while I'm making these paintings and, uh, and it's just great. It's great when, 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 it, when it kind of comes to, it comes to an end and, uh, and I have something there to to look at, something there to look at and to think about. And I suppose this now, this show is about me. This is about me um, experiencing a, another side to, to, to what I'm doing, you know. 
this is the easy part, making the paintings. This now is the hard part. Now I've got to think about the paintings and I've got to think about, um, I've got to think about people and, um, and, and how the paintings are seen and how they're perceived. But, um, and, and, it's, and it's amazing, I mean, you know, how, you know, for me, when I look at my paintings and they just give me, they just give me a few kind of, they give me not subtle insights, but fairly, you know, fairly strong indications in, into the, the kind of person that I am, you know, and uh, the kind of person that is actually making these, these paintings. And yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a great feeling actually to, to be able to, to use painting as a means of understanding myself, you know. I don't know whether I'm sort of digressing too much, but it's, um, yeah. When I'm, when I'm making a painting, I'm, I'm constantly pushing for something to surprise me. You know, I need to get to a, to a place, I need to get to a point in a painting where I kind of don't know what I'm doing, where, and I don't know if I can do it. You know, I know some of these paintings look really simple, but sometimes, you know, to, to kind of get these paintings to look so simple is incredibly hard. And, and often I don't know whether I can do it. I think that I'm, I'm a very direct painter. I don't make sketches. I don't plan paintings. I just, I, I, I take an image, I see something, and I think, right, let's see where this goes. And so they constantly surprise me. They constantly, um, yeah, the, 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 they constantly fascinate me. When they start to, to fascinate me, they usually fascinate me because, because they are surprising. What paint can actually Kind of do on its own with that little bit of that little bit of help um, is very surprising. What about your your choice of colour? My choice of colour is um, again is is linked to the, is linked to the way that I work. This you know again you know I don't like to I don't even like to plan colour. I like to work fast. I'll, I, you could say I'm, I'm, I'm working like a, a, a chef with every ingredient, you know, I've got everything I need. And then in a way, right, that I've always, I've always been putting things together, whether it's clothes, whether it's, whether it's in the house, it's furniture, whether it's how I hang pictures, I've always been involved in putting something together. And making paintings is just, it's the same. It's the same, it's about, it's about knowing what goes with what. And, and when that, when, when, something, when something goes together or, or um, when something doesn't go together, you certainly see it. I mean, it's everywhere outside. You know, when I walk around, um, you know, there are people that know how to put things together and there are people that don't. Is it beyond aesthetics? Is it something other than aesthetics that you're talking about? Um, I don't kind think of, so. Kind of zen of... Not really. I think that it's, it is just about aesthetics. I think that it's about, it's just about knowing what works with what. You know, from the, the depth of the painting to the, to, to the material that is painted on, to the colour that sits next to another colour, to the drawing, to, to where the line ends, to where it begins. All of these things, you know, it's just like dressing something and, um, and being confident about what it is you're putting together. You know, if, if I think that it's, uh, that aspect of the painting is about confidence. That aspect of the painting is about kind of knowing what I like and how I want something to, to, to look or I want something to feel. And going back to the original question, this uh, notion of colour, the choice of colour. I mean, there's, n there's not loads of colour on that painting. I mean, the, the point is that there isn't a lot of colour. In some respects, in some respects, 
there's a kind of, I'm playing safe in some respects. There's an elegance in that. Well, I, I, I agree, I agree. I mean, when I look at these paintings, to me, there is a certain elegance. And, and, I, and I, I enjoy elegance. I like looking at elegance. I, I, I appreciate elegance on, on, a, on a deep level. And, you know, to a certain extent, I've been surrounded by elegance. And, and, and I think that that feeds into my paintings. And that's always had an influence on me. And, uh, yeah, there's something about that that I want, I want to see in the paintings. I want them to have that. So again, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of, I suppose that I'm pushing for that. I, I require that when I make the paintings. And, and, I, and, I, and I, want, I want them to be perceived in that way. So to, um, to keep them simple, not to overload them with colour, and it, it, seems to, it seems to give back that quality. And, and that's something that's just come about through sort of trial and error, you know, years of just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. I mean, making paintings is a, is a really, it's a, it's a really, sometimes a really difficult thing to do. And, and it's all about making mistakes. I mean, you know, these all come about by making loads and loads of mistakes and, uh, and learning by those mistakes. And I've made paintings too where there's just so much colour, you know, vibrant colour and, 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 and loads of it. Um, and, and maybe one day I'll go back to those kind of paintings when, 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 uh, when the time is right.